The head of Tokyo Electric Power Company says the utility is preparing a new report on the crisis at the crippled Fukushima plant. The announcement comes as the company tries to gain understanding to restart two other reactors in central Japan. TEPCO managers released their first report on the nuclear disaster in June last year. The evaluation was based on the company's own investigations, but many questions were left unanswered. So TEPCO president Naomi Hirose says the company is preparing another report. He told the lower house body that the new panel includes nuclear power experts from the United States and Britain and that the report will be released soon. A technical team in Niigata Prefecture is examining the safety features of the Kashiwazaki Kariwa plant where the utility hopes to restart two reactors. TEPCO management apparently decided a further probe into the nuclear accident in Fukushima was needed to gain the prefecture's approval. Hirose says a copy of the report will be given to Niigata officials for review. Japanese policymakers are preparing to change their approach to national security. They're set to debate a bill allowing the government to designate state secrets. Critics say the changes could threaten people's right to know. Prime Minister Abe will present the bill later on Thursday. Lawmakers are expected to vote to create a National Security Council. And they're scheduled to debate the bill on state secrets. Under the proposals, people who leak information could face 10 years in prison. But opposition members say the definition of what qualifies as a secret is not clear. They say government officials could abuse the mechanism to withhold unfavorable information. Some policymakers want to strengthen people's right to know by amending the law on freedom of information. The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have been battling problem after problem. They've been plugging leaks and scrambling to build storage tanks for contaminated water. Now they're about to begin work on a task that's taken years to prepare. They're ready to move the fuel rods from the damaged reactor buildings to a safer location. NHK World's Yoichi Tateiwa has more in today's Nuclear Watch. The media entered Fukushima Daiichi on Wednesday to see the number four reactor building. The building contains more than 1,500 fuel units. Most of them have been used. They're extremely hot, highly radioactive, and experts say they need to be kept cool for 30 to 40 years. The rods are stored in a pool about 20 meters above ground. The water traps radiation and keeps the rods cool. But a hydrogen explosion in 2011 weakened the building's structure. Experts say the rods must be moved to a safer place. Managers of Tokyo Electric Power Company have been preparing to start the job for the last two and a half years. They plan to lift the rods out with a crane, but the building was too weak to support it. So walkers built a steel frame. They will transfer the rods to containers that can seal in radiation. They will then move these to a starry facility within the compound and put them back into water. The job is far from straightforward. The walkers have to maneuver the rods under water to prevent any radiation from escaping and they will have to cope with high levels of radiation, up to 200 microsieverts per hour. The working environment here is more difficult and stressful than usual. Therefore, I want to devote every effort to safely transfer all the fuel rods. TEPCO officials say it will take more than a year to remove all the rods from reactor number four. Then. They will have to do it all over again at the three other reactors. They haven't said when they expect to finish. The operation is due to start this month. It's the latest huddle in the long process of decommissioning the plant, a project that's expected to take up to 40 years. Yoichiro Tateiwa, NHK World.
Fukushima is uh, really dangerous right now and um, getting more dangerous by the moment. In November it'll be more dangerous when they try to remove the fuel rods from uh, Unit 4. Certainly um, threatens California because we're right, we're in the line of fire here. So. Radiation exposure has always been uh, one of my causes. What do we do with the, um, you know, the waste? We don't know what's, what to do with it still to this day, and I'm concerned about my family and my grandkids, and that's why I'm here. So for me to be here on the beach was imperative, especially with the impact that's happening with the water that's being dumped, the contaminated water that's being dumped into our ocean every day from Fukushima. So to have that connection um, was really important to me. We're all connected by water. We're all connected by our oceans. Japan is really not that far from us, and other places, Australia, Canada, Canada, we all share Europe. We all, all the waters connect. Two things. This, this really could be the big one. This could screw everything up. Talk about the economy and the Tea Party. That's nothing compared to what could happen given fuel rods 100 feet off the ground. The effects of that invisible dragon that they call it, wow. Um, and at the same time, it's the biggest opportunity humankind has ever had to come together. It's really exciting. Uh, this, this changes everything. I mean, it makes every other problem we have diminish in importance, just disappear almost. It's this convergence that's happening. So I'm so um, touched that we can all come together like that and really connect. And that's, that's what I wanted. I wanted everybody to connect. So I'm really happy. Well, Japanese media groups have toured the crippled Fukushima nuclear power plant ahead of the removal of its used nuclear fuel rods. The plant was badly damaged in the aftermath of the earthquake and tsunami in 2011. Its operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, announced plans for the removal in reactor uh, number four last week. The reactor is one of the three that suffered a meltdown after the disaster. The removal process is considered extremely dangerous and could possibly unleash high levels of radiation. Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority said that the proposal by TEPCO was appropriate and that the removal could start in November as planned.
South Korea has seen a fall in sales of seafood as consumers fear it could be contaminated after reports of leaks at the Fukushima nuclear plant in Japan. Food authorities say imports from Japan have decreased vastly and they are doing all they can to ensure no contaminated fish enters markets. But that has done little to boost consumer confidence. In general, the South Korean distrust in Japanese fishery products is very serious. Because of that, even the sales of safe domestic products are being damaged. Currently, all imports of fish from eight prefectures neighboring Fukushima are banned. Fish from regions other than those eight prefectures are obliged to attach a radioactivity inspection report or certificate of origin. Also, we are conducting radioactivity inspections on every These import. fishermen have started hauling in one of winter's prize catches, snow crabs. Crabs are a seasonal delicacy showing up in every Thing from sushi to hot pot soups. The Sea of Japan is a key hunting ground. The crews of these boats are trawling 40 kilometers off the coast of Fukui Prefecture. They put down their nets at the stroke of midnight. Not long after, they were pulling in the first catch of the season. Some of the shells measured 20 centimeters across. I'm glad to see these crabs. We will work hard. The first auction takes place later on Wednesday. If the season goes well, the boats will be hauling in snow crabs until late Leaders March. have struggled to satisfy the country's energy needs ever since the accident at Fukushima Daiichi. The nuclear crisis led them to shut down reactors across Japan one by one. They say because of that, they have to revise their targets for reducing greenhouse gases. The officials set a base year of 2005. They say by 2020, they hope to reduce emissions over those levels by 3.8 percent. Government leaders are expected to approve the change next week. And Prime Minister Shinzo Abe will submit the target to delegates at a United Nations conference on climate change. The meetings begin on Monday in Warsaw, Poland. Four years ago, Japanese promised to slash emissions by one quarter over 1990 levels. The new target is about 3% higher. Slash. Japan's spiny lobster known as isebe is a prized gourmet delicacy. But recently, there's been trouble in some of the lobster's home grounds. Fishermen in Nagasaki Prefecture, southwest Japan, are alarmed at falling catches. Experts say rising water temperatures and an altered ecosystem are the cause, and they're looking for a fix. This little creature is a spiny lobster larva called Puerilus. It's about two centimeters long and has a distinctive transparent body. The number of Puerilus in the ocean is falling. This means, of course, less lobster. The Fisheries Agency says last year's catch in Nagasaki hit an all-time low. Over the past 50 years, the number of lobsters caught has fallen by 80%. The Nomozaki Sea is one of Nagasaki's most fertile spiny lobster grounds. For 16 years, researchers from the local fisheries institute have been conducting an underwater survey. Ten years ago, they set these concrete blocks on the sea floor. The blocks helped them study the lobster's habitat. This is rare footage of the lava in its transparent form. After five days, the lava sheds its clear shell and turns red. Here is a baby spiny lobster. It's about three centimeters long and almost identical to its fully grown self. The researchers drilled each of the blocks with holes of various sizes. The lobsters move around and find the holes they like as they shed their shells and grow. But despite this cozy sort of apartment building, the number of lobsters per block this year have fallen to one third their peak of about 70. To investigate, the researchers looked into the lobster's life cycle. This picture was taken three years ago. It shows one of the concrete blocks covered with a tall variety of seaweed called Sargassum macrocarpum. The larvae are born close to land. After drifting in the open seas for nearly a year, they return as puerilus. They descend to the ocean floor by grabbing onto seaweed. They mature as they feed on the creatures that live there. The seaweed is essential for the spiny lobster to form colonies. But now conditions have changed. 
Last autumn, ocean temperatures rose and the fish that eat the seaweed were active for longer. Researchers say the resource was depleted all across Nagasaki. The problem is that the seaweed is disappearing and it is having difficulty recovering it to its original state. In an effort to restore the environment, workers for Nagasaki Prefecture have planted seaweed in 400 concrete blocks which they will install on the seafloor. The blocks will be enclosed by nets. Researchers believe the nets will protect the seaweed enough for it to replenish itself. Local fishermen hope this will lure back the puerilus to the traditional lobster grounds. By nurturing seaweed, we want to create an environment where spiny lobsters can thrive. Many people hope this simple measure for the environment will bring back spiny lobster numbers to their earlier heights of plenty. People with homes along Japan's coastlines live with a nagging fear of tsunami. Waves triggered by offshore earthquakes have smashed into communities time and again over the centuries. And the disaster in March 2011 sharpened people's awareness of the need to run to higher ground whenever they feel the earth move. Officials in a seaside town in western Japan are helping make sure the elderly don't get left behind. People in the town of Minami live near a seismic threat. The Nankai Trough lies on the seabed just to the south. It's caused massive earthquakes in the past and could trigger another. Local officials say that movement could send a tsunami 17 meters high, smashing into homes. Half the residents of this neighborhood are at least 65 years old. Some have weak legs, so they're training to walk faster in case they need to evacuate. I need to make my legs stronger. I've got to be ready to escape. Okinobu Seto leads the local disaster management group. He measured how far people would need to walk to the evacuation area. Then he worked out how long they'd probably take. He found people with weak legs would need six minutes, twice as long as everyone else. Scientists say a tsunami would hit the neighborhood 12 minutes after a powerful earthquake. So, if the quake lasted three minutes, the elderly would only have three minutes to spare. Seto says they shouldn't waste that time gathering belongings to take with them. People with weak legs don't have a moment to waste. They should pack what they need ahead of time. Members of Seto's group are urging older people to fill bags with essentials in case they have to stay in an evacuation shelter. Seniors are packing underwear, spectacles, toothbrushes, all the things they couldn't expect to borrow. Some have packed their medication. I've packed underwear, candy and medicine. I'd be worried if I didn't have my medicine. Seto is storing their emergency bags at a shelter on high ground. Sixteen seniors are packed and ready in case of a tsunami. They should be all right for a few days, as long as they evacuate. Members of Seto's group say they'll keep up their efforts until they're sure all the locals can get to safety in plenty of time.